Welcome to the exciting world of tourism. Today we are going to discuss about tour operator with the focus on overview and its functions. So the objectives of this study after this presentation you would be able to understand what is the tour operator, what are the processes to consider while setting a tour company, what are the functions of a tour operator. Here we will discuss the first three functions of a tour operator that are product knowledge and packaging, costing a tour package and issuing of vouchers. So before I proceed, let us understand who is a tour operator. A tour operator is basically a person who packages together a series of travel services. We may also say components which includes transportation, airport transfers, accommodation, excursions and sightseeing besides guide services or any other services as requested by the tourist. He may be called as a wholesaler and a manufacturer sometimes. The product which comes out after assembling all these services together is known as a package tour. Friends, we must understand that many a times the, uh, the tourist he may ask for a package when he wants to visit a destination. So the person whom he approaches to make all his travel arrangements, in fact, a person who facilitates all his travel arrangements by putting them, them together is called as a tour operator. He may club all the individual components and then he may sell it to the tourist for their consumption. Generally, the tour operator buys these services in bulk from the principal suppliers to form a package. Now we need to understand who are the principal suppliers. Principal suppliers are basically the airlines, the hotels or any other, uh, or any other organization, maybe an entertainment uh, organization from where the tourist clubs all those, all the inventory. It could be the rooms of a hotel, it could be the seats of an airline, it could be the seats of a coach and then he clubs them together and he sells them uh, as a package tour. So as he buys these things in bulk, he may also be called as a wholesaler. I'm also using the word manufacturer here. Why? Because sometimes he also owns his own products. For example, many companies like Thomas Cook, they have their own Volvo, they have their own coaches uh, for uh, taking the, to, uh, the tourists to on sightseeing tours. So that's why we may say sometimes when they buy, they may also run their own hotels. Example, Southern Travels, it runs its own hotels. So that is why sometimes they are also called as manufacturer as they may own a tourism product. The complete package of arrangements and services is then sold at an exclusive package price to clients through retail agents in the tourist generating markets. Basically, we call the tour operator as a wholesaler also because he buys the things, he buys the inventory of tourism components in bulk, be it the airline seats, be it the hotel rooms. He buys them in bulk and he buys them well in advance of any uh, tourist movement which is expected to be in the future. And he, what he does is he sells it at an exclusive package price, which is the combination of all the components put together. He may, now there are two choices. He may sell it directly to the tourist or he may also sell it through the retail agents in the tourist generating markets. At the same time, it must be noted that a tour operator not only does package tour but also ensures the smooth operation of the tour. Obviously, this is very very important because the complete facilitation of the tour as, and it goes seamlessly and hassle free for the guest is the core responsibility of the tour who is organizing the tour and he's not only organizing, he's putting everything together in prop in a package and packaging it and then he's selling it and then not only that is his job, the packaging and selling, also comes his organizing and operational part which is the very important part of his job responsibility. 
Now, there are many management issues in tour operations. Let us discuss some of them. Number one is the task to be performed for setting up a tour company. Uh, definitely, this is a very big, uh, complete setup of uh, a management challenge for any tour operator who wants to establish himself as a novice in this trade. So for him, setting up a tour company is uh, a challenge. Again, marketing research and product, uh, that is the tour package formulation. See, market research is the edifice of any uh, good package tour. The tourist can only sell a good destination and it can only sell like hot selling cakes if the product has been well researched, if the, the tour operator knows what is the potential of that destination, what it has to offer to the tourist, how different it is from the other destinations. So then only the tourist would be interested if you're giving him something like we say nowadays that the tourist wants cookie cutter itineraries means that they want something different out of the box. They want to indulge in different experiential itineraries. They don't want to just passively go and visit a destination. In fact, they want to go and feel the destination. They want to go and actually uh, be a part of the locals lifestyle and they want to get the local feel for that you must have a very solid market research as a tour operator definitely once you have the once you have done the research and you know what you want to sell then comes the selling part which is very very challenging because we say tourism is uh, it, 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 when somebody is buying a tourism package, it's a huge investment, especially when we talk in terms of an outbound package, it is a huge investment. So here the, the tourist, uh, the tour operator, uh, he has to adapt a lot of strategies to sell the product to the tourist. It could be using the electronic media, it could be using the print media, it could be using the social media as nowadays this is the most in uh, used media uh, preferred by the tour operators and also by the uh, potential tourists who are looking for a tourist package. Likewise, organizing, monitoring and controlling the organization's manpower as well as tour operations definitely because uh, taking care of the manpower is a major challenge for the tour operators. A tour operator is basically a large uh, tour company which has, which may have a staff ranging from 50 to 100 and or it could go to more uh, staff uh, depending upon the scale of its operations and its uh, uh, the departmentation which uh, the tour operator has. And depending upon that, it would have the staff and definitely it needs to be managed well. So this is also one of the challenge as well as the tour operations, the complete operations of the tour. It should go seamlessly. Now setting up a tour company, this is a very risky business. I must say why I'm saying this sometimes uh, you don't know uh, whether the tourists will would like the product which you are offering or not, or whether the you because as a tour operator you would buy the things in bulk as a tour uh, operator you will buy the airline seats the hotel rooms etc uh, much in advance from the principal suppliers and if she fails in if you are failing in selling the that the package or the airline seats or the hotel rooms there are fair chances that you will be involved in heavy losses so hence before setting up a tour company uh, we must be prepared to take the risk. So you have to be mentally prepared that at times your inventory might not be sold out fully or sometimes it might happen that you know uh, maybe there is a catastrophe and uh, whatever you were anticipating to, uh, to sell a packet during a particular span of time and due to the outbreak of a catastrophe it could be an outbreak of a disease or it could be a natural calamity the the people are uh, you are not able to sell the uh, the package and the people are not able to buy the package from you and as a result the, your complete uh, the money which has been blocked in the inventory uh, will uh, will be a huge loss for you that's why we say that sometimes it can be a risky proposition too similarly a tour operator must be absolutely clear regarding the type of business to be handled for example, would the company deal with inbound tours, outbound tours, domestic tours 
or all of them or any two of them etc this should be decided at the planning stage itself while preparing the project report what i mean to say is that a tour operator has a choice whether he wants to be a inbound tour operator whether he wants to be an outbound tour operator who is taking the tourists from his country to another country or whether he wants to be a domestic tour operator he wants to he wants the tourist to deal with the tourist only within his country or whether he wants to have two departments together or three departments together so this all is his absolute his own choice depending upon the scale of operations he wants to uh, be in, into sometimes you know what he does is that he may begin with domestic operations getting the response he might also get into outbound or uh, so likewise sometimes it is not necessary that you start with all the departments you might start with one and then later on you might diversify so the choice is yours but these uh, these questions must be very clear at the very beginning of the conceptualization stage when you're planning to set up a tour travel to a company so setting up a tour company for the all companies whether large or small must fulfill certain minimum requirements like a proper financial base obviously you must have the finances to uh, you know invest in this project to invest in a in this tourism business you must have a adequate premises Uh, you, a good location is must these days because of the pandemic may, we are all going uh, online and everything is being operated from home only work up from home is a new uh, normal however uh, but when we talk in tourism we say seeing is believing so tourists want to basically uh, they want to Uh, before they take a tour package they might like to visit the office of a tour operator and might like to meet the staff in person so at that times you need to have a good premises at a good location where the which is approachable for the tourists where they can come and uh, you know inquire about the packages or uh, if they have uh, have any uh, thing in their mind they can clarify with you so adequate premises a good location at a good place is a must a trained and qualified staff obviously we must have a staff good staff who is professional in their approach who is knowledgeable who is aware of uh, what is happening around who has an expertise in tourism trade this is very important he should not sound dumb when the tourist goes and he uh, wants to take a consultancy or he wants to take an expertise and uh, the staff is not able to handle his uh, query so that will put a bad impression of the uh, of the company so as a tour operator you must ensure that you have a very qualified and a very professional staff um likewise uh, the government approvals are also a must from time to time the government keeps uh, you know asking you to renew your licenses or to uh, keep on adding uh, new uh, things to not to qualify as a tour operator so you must be uh, abreast of the latest uh, happenings uh, being a tour operator of the gov- from the government side you must uh, be in line with the government approvals uh, and an authority to sell on behalf of uh, the industry or brick principles in return for commissions and you must have the authority to sell whatever you want to sell be it any tourism product like the seats airline seats uh, or the the hotel rooms so you must have an authority um, and in return uh, you will sell it for the commissions so uh, so going ahead with that having adequate premises at a suitable location as i said earlier also is very important for starting a new venture uh, many good travel companies uh, they have their offices in malls also like we have uh, companies like thomas cook lpt they have offices in malls so or make my trip also so people prefer visiting their offices while they are on shopping spree so they can go and inquire about the package uh, likewise a tour operator must Uh, be able to establish linkages with the principal suppliers which may be the airlines hotels tourist uh, transport operators guides and escorts etc for the purpose of designing the package because this business is all about networking so in being a tour operator you cannot work in vacuum you have to work in collaboration with various principal suppliers with the airlines with the railways with the hotels 
with the government with the media so everyone with everyone you have to maintain a good relationship a good linkage for this information has to be obtained for marketing purposes linkages have to be established with travel agents tourism departments etc so as i said for basically to keep on get, getting latest information you also have to be abreast of what is happening around so you have to maintain a good rapport with the uh, with the government with the it could be the ministry of tourism as in case of india it could be the state tourism departments like we have the uh, delhi tourism and development corporation we have uh, gujarat tourism uh, tourism corporation of gujarat limited example so we have to also be aware of our other competitors like other travel agents they we also have to keep an eye uh, on them to be aware of what is happening around uh, what i'm trying to say here is that as a tour operator you have to keep your eyes and ears open you have to ensure that you are aware of what is happening around you that is very important in fact the owner manager of a tour operator company must attain all knowledge about the products and market conditions this means having a proper understanding of tourism markets tourism trends tourism profiles tourism forecasts promotional strategies trade linkages travel regulations and tourism products etc besides a tour operator after one year of operations must seek recognition from the department of tourism government of india now let us understand the functioning of tour operator now there are different functions of tour operator so let us delve into the first function that is the product knowledge and packaging which is a very very important function within these categories but before i uh, make you understand what is the function of product knowledge and packaging let me explain you the types of tour operators within these categories we can further divide the tour operator into two categories mass market operators are those who offer routine packages which include travel accommodation and some services example is of thomas cook lpti mmt make my trip what i'm trying to say is these companies sell very regular brochure products regular tourism products uh, which are which are a combination of various travel components put together so they are selling uh, routine destinations it could be international destinations which are the most uh, commercialized destinations like they are selling europe they are sell, uh, they are selling uh, uh, um, parts of europe they are selling uh, usa packages so they are selling the packages which are which are already uh, taken by many people uh, the basic destinations likewise we have the specialist tour operators who design their packages keeping in view the market segmentation of the customer now we have to understand these they do not such tour operators they do not uh, try to accommodate all the segments of the customers they try to focus on particular segment here i have taken an example of southern travels so this company focuses on the travelers uh, on uh, who are basically from south so all south indian travelers is their key market so they have their uh, operations for such travelers as they take care of the needs of such travelers or south indian travelers even when they are traveling to north india they take care of their needs such as the food they they take care of the food habits they have a southern the they have a cook who is who makes south indian dishes so basically they focus on one particular segment of market that is south indian market so we these are called as specialist tour operators uh, another example is of like example there are packaged tours which are created for adventure tourists like some companies are only for adventure tourism for example we have the snow leopard uh, then flying fox likewise there are other package uh, companies which offer packages on wildlife tours such as travel in or some other uh, design packages for particular age group also like there are companies which only sell packages for senior citizens for pilgrimage tours Uh, likewise some tour operators go for geographical segmentation and operate in a specific region only for example certain local tour operators may organize tours in their catchment areas only or 
they may deal in only one or two countries so the choice is yours whether you want to um, sell be a mass tour operator who sells all kinds of packages you have a second choice whether you want to only cater to a particular segment of market be it it could be adventure tourists it could be senior citizens or it could be wildlife tourists or you have a choice that you want to operate only in one territory one area within your local area or maybe you want to only sell the packages of only one country or you two countries so all these are your choices among the various categories there are tour operators who specializes in selling specific type of uh, uh, these uh, tourism products also like accommodation transportation and entertainment so th this is also one market in fact there is no end to imagination and creativity in designing special tours after analyzing the demand trends and attitude you may go in for any kind of packages nowadays the most in thing is that to, uh, tour operators are operating specialized interest tours so what is that they offer customized packages and they specially design and package tours on the request of the clients so they will tailor made it according to what you want a typical example in this regard could be of the following a group of 15 archaeologists from united kingdom intends to visit india so i've taken this example they want to have a feed of prominent archaeological sites and they are in the age group of 35 to 45 they place their request to a travel agency in uk and the travel agency passes on the request to a tour company in india so the company has to get in touch with an archaeologist in India for the identification of the sites to be visited, what would be the modes of transportation for these sites, what accommodation would be provided, they would have to identify a tourist guide who specializes in archaeology, they would have to uh, also couple the package with the different types of uh, entertainment that could be provided to them during the evenings, the kind of meals which could be served there and where they could be taken for shopping. So as a customized package, you have to uh, really think, uh, uh, you know, very imaginatively and creatively and you have to give them a package which would uh, suit their requirement. So that is important. The first task here as a tour operator is to assess whether such a group you can handle as a company or not. In fact, after assessing these aspects only, the tour operator will package the different components and accept the offer. The tour operator can also think of providing uh, in addition to a package by offering a good a book on archaeology to the group members, uh, a visit to a museum from where the uh, archaeological artifacts are kept, or, show, uh, or taking them to a shopping uh, emporium where they can buy uh, such kind of artifacts and all. So basically what I'm trying to stay, say here is that you have to think what else you can uh, add as a value addition to the package which the tourist has asked for. He might have a particular set of things in his mind but you can also be very imaginative and you can give him a very memorable experience of his lifetime that is why he is hiring you as a tour operator because you have an expertise you are an expert in that local area and you know what is the best to showcase maybe you, you it's, it's your an opportunity for you as a tour operator to showcase your heritage your culture of your country and when the tourist comes uh, if he sees this he likes all this he would like to repeat his visit with you and uh, that would also mean a uh, repeated business for you and uh, and uh, an opportunity to grow for you as a tour operator so you must ensure that you give uh, you know uh, uh, freebies uh, to the uh, tourists when they are coming so maybe some they are not expecting something like uh, as i just discussed in the example you gave him a book on archaeology or you took him to a museum or you gave him some artifact so or you took him for a shopping spree so this is something he would really appreciate and he would like to continue with you in the future also. It should be kept in mind that such requests ask for special efforts on the part of tour operator to package uh, such customized tours uh, you know, for the group and with, the, uh, with a tinge of personal touch. That's what I told you. For the construction of any type of, uh, there are different considerations while product designing and packaging. So we will just go on with that for the construction of any type of holiday package market research is an essential component as i discussed with you earlier also and once the decision is taken regarding the type of business to be done the tour operator must take in account the services that are to be packaged 
At the same time, the tour operator must have a first-hand experience of the quality of the services which the principal suppliers offers and this means field visits. Basically, you are buying the product, you don't uh, have anything of your own as a tour operator. You are buying things and you are renting out or you are renting things for the tourists from the principal suppliers who could be the airlines, who could be the hotels and you, uh, they could give you anything. But and you could pass on the same thing to the uh, tourist which might not be a very good uh, experience or good uh, might not be a good product so as a tour operator you must actually take the first hand experience before selling that product to the tourist for this you must go in for field visits which are also called as familiarization trips or fam trips so in tourism these are very very important and generally these tourist tours are at the cost of the principal suppliers who themselves are looking for expanding their business they will sponsor your uh, your trip uh, and uh, they would uh, allow you to experiment with their products and take the, your first hand experience and if you like their product you would buy their product and you would recommend the same product to the uh, tourists which would mean repeated business for the uh, for these uh, principal suppliers also in fact a tour operator should constantly update the in uh, the knowledge about the destination in order to improve and redesign the package if necessary every year it must be remembered that the packages are generally designed and sold at least a year in advance as most of the tourists in, uh, in the prominent tourist generating markets plan their holidays much in advance there, this is more necessary because of the competition in the market the product knowledge has to be always stored and regularly updated besides product knowledge planning organizing monitoring and control should be an inbuilt exercise while packaging tours while selling the tours you may face such questions as to what are your alternate or contingency plans for meeting the failure of any service that is offered in the package for example there might be flight cancellation there might be visa cancellation of the traveler or their airport taxes might have increased so you must always as a tour operator have a contingency plan with you this is important and it shows how professional you are hence it is necessary that the pace of operations contingency plans and controls are decided at the initial stage itself now second function is costing a tour package how do tour operators make money when they are or doing a costing so the two major methods here are increasing markup or either making savings through buying power so important terms in costing a package we'll discuss just now are markup buying power net rate gross rate profit and margin markup what is markup in order to ensure that we make up a, a profit we must first be aware of the total cost of the ingredients of the package of our company and we must add a markup to that total a markup is the extra amount it could be anything x y z which a company would like to keep if we give a, a markup if you have a markup which is too high because we are too greedy or we keep a markup uh, which is too less in both cases it would be loss of business because the tourist will find out from the competitors and he your share would go to the competitor who would be selling it at less price or if you are selling it at too less the cost you would not be able to survive in your business so you have to keep a very decent markup normally you have to keep take su such a decision where you are ensuring that the markup is you are not at a loss also or you and you are not also making too much of money out of the tourist so you must maintain a balance and you are also able to cover your cost so this is the markup so buying power uh, we may also be able to increase the amount we uh, we make on uh, each tour group by working to reduce the price at which we buy the services so this has the effect of increasing our margin without increasing the price at which we must sell to the clients we are in a good position to negotiate in this way when we are able to give a, give our suppliers such as hotel a lot of business which we may have gathered from many wholesalers or when we are able to persuade our clients to travel to a destination at unpopular times off season times of the year so basically you can you must have a good negotiation power with the uh, with your uh, principal supplier as much as you buy at a less price the more uh, price you could uh, the less price you could also pass on to the client and that could mean a uh, voluminous business for you 
next point is net rate so this is the price which a supplier charges us and which we he wants to be paid by us the net rate is always kept absolutely confidential to us and the client must have no idea to the extent of the markup obviously that is your own call net rate is the amount which the supplier is quoting you so that is net to net cost which is going uh, which is coming to him and he's giving to you so on that you will add a markup so competitors may receive net rates from the same supplier and will probably uh, have different markups so you also as i said you have to be always aware of what all markups your competitors are also come uh, coming up with sometimes you might be charging too high and that means the business may go to your client or if you are charging too high then you must have a good reason to uh you know sound to the tourists that maybe you are giving a high quality service or whatever so you must have valid reasons for charging high from the client then we discuss the next the gross rate which is the rate which a supplier quotes it includes an amount expressed as a percentage of the gross rate for us the hidden part for us is usually known as commission all of these figures are kept confidential to the travel trade clients are well aware that everyone is making money but they are never permitted to know the exact details likewise profit and margin these are the other concepts profit is it is what a company hopes to have left out at the end of the year after all the bills have been paid including the taxes profit is not the same as markup however it should be noted that the many travel companies call the amount they have made on uh, the profit on the file and uh, not uh, markup on the file so this is technically incorrect but this is also common practice likewise margin it is much the same as a markup but whereas markup ends tends to be expressed as a percentage ma margin tends to be an amount expressed in the form of money so how what are the ways uh, tour operator can reduce cost sometimes you will cost your tour and find that the selling price is too high for your client it is not always possible to cut the margin or try to negotiate a lower buying price you can try a number of alternatives in that case sometimes maybe because you know the price the supply is not quoting uh, is quoting you is very high his he, the price which you want is le uh, is less but he is quoting you high or maybe you are not able to charge high from the client he is not able to give you so you have to be very flexible in your approach in that case you have to be very decisive and you have to be very smart you have to take a smart move maybe you could reduce the number of nights you could reduce change the meal plan of the client you could uh, maybe from the american plan you could bring him to uh, european plan or continental plan or you could reduce the you know included sightseeing or activities or maybe you could use a cheaper hotel accommodation or cheaper airline whatever issuing vouchers is the third function vouchers sometimes also called as exchange orders are documents which are issued by travel businesses they serve instead of endless letters and can be used for making reservations confirming reservations and guarantee payment instead of writing a lengthy booking letter sending a deposit check or cash then writing a confirmation letter and sending another check or more cash a voucher can be written this saves time effort and removes the risk of escorts and other staff carrying large amounts of cash because vouchers are promises to pay they are countable documents and must be treated like tickets or cash they must be carefully secured and stock controlled There are different types of vouchers which can be used for a variety of purposes typically these will include hotel bookings meal breaks on tours meal vouchers transport vouchers guide and representative vouchers entrance fees to attractions tolls for roads bridges or mountain passes hiring of equipment for sports and activities and many other services vouchers are usually printed in sets of four or more copies and the distribution of the copies is maybe as follows like an office client file copy maybe the number one client copy which he or she presents to hotels for the service on arrival hotel copy goes in advance of client to act as confirmation of phone booking accounts department copy some companies may have used for fifth or more copies to some of a voucher is a promise to pay for a service someone promises to provide When you issue a voucher you should keep a record of the voucher number and the client file it belongs to in a stock record book as well as keeping a copy of the voucher in the account and client's files some companies work on photocopied vouchers these are cheap and easy to produce but have disadvantage that they are easy to copy and so are open to fraud 
Some modern computer reservations and ticketing systems can print and number their own vouchers, which is less open to fraud and the cheaper than going on and to an outside printer. Vouchers must be issued accurately and completed in all aspects. So, with this, we have just accomplished who is a tour operator. I'm sure you must be now clear about who is a tour operator, how to set up a tour company, what are the considerations before you set up a tour company and what are the various functions. Number one, the product packaging and designing. Number two was costing a package. Number three was issuing of vouchers. Thank you.